separation. So we're using both type enforcement separation and MCS separation. Uh, we, the goal is to use the future namespace. You're not going to hold that sign up. <sighs> oh, God. Okay. Let's sit down. <laughs> okay, so security, you know, it's about, again, we're trying to wrap this thing as tightly as possible. You can watch the demonstration of it. Um, this slide is, gonna, is, is kind of wrong right now, okay? So uh, when we did this slide for the customers, we were talking about libvirt being the uh, controlling unit for controlling these things. We're actually not going to use libvirt for Docker. So we decided to break away from using libvirt for us. So libvirt is used for vert sandbox. Docker is going to be used using systemd and spawn as its underneath edge engine. Right now, Docker on Fedora uses, uses LXC. We have some patches in-house right now to use systemd and spawn. So for RHEL, um, for, RHEL we, for some reason, we don't want to support LXC tools because well, they're very, uh, it'd be a lot of QA. Um, so we want to use just systemd and spawn. But um, the tooling that's in RHEL 7 right now is vert sandbox, which takes advantage of libvirt. Um, <coughs> vert sandbox brings two new packages that if you want to play with it. There's vert sandbox, vert sandbox service. And what both of those tools do is they share the host operating system to the container. So it's different than Docker. It's basically slash user is being shared into the container. Um, you can just, if you want to run Vert Sandbox any application, it will instantaneously wrap that application and probably break it. But you can run Vert Sandbox bin shell and actually see what it's like to be in a container. So it's that simple to do. Um, Another more advanced option is Vert Sandbox Service. Vert Sandbox Service is tied into the system, understands what unit files are, actually generates uh, containers that run systemd inside of the container and outside of the container. So you have a unit file, start up a container, and it goes all the way down to systemd running inside of the container, and then the only thing that systemd runs inside of the container is your service file. So if you wanted to run 100 Apache servers on your system, each one of the Apache servers would have a private version of slash var, have their own private slash Etsy um, um, directory, um, but basically be sharing user user space. And it's really re fairly easy to show. If I, uh, last year at the summit, I showed how to, how to do this, and that's the stuff that's in RHEL 7 now. Um, one of the things to understand, right, both these technologies, potentially Docker and Vert Sandbox, have the ability to potentially boot an operating system but it's not supported. It's a dumb idea. Use KVM. That's what KVM was built for. Remember, I told you that the containers do not have full containment. So if you run a full operating system, most likely we're going to break you. System D might block you. SE Linux might block you. Um, we're removing capabilities to do things like create device nodes. It's going to break. Use KVM. You boot in an operating system, use the technology that was built for it. So let's get to Cheruta, the thing that everybody came for. Darker, 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 okay? Everything is dark. <laughs> okay, that's all we hear about. So six months ago, I was like vert sandbox all the way, and then all of a sudden, I got steamrolled by darker. <laughs> so now I'm darker. I, I found, the, you know, found religion here. <laughs> so what uh, Docker, Red Hat basically signed a agreement, agreed to collaborate with Docker about uh, back in September. So. When I say this technology is brand new, we are still figuring out how to use it, what are we going to use, you know, do with it. We have lots and lots of meetings on it, and you guys are probably hearing lots and lots of stuff about Docker. The reason we're doing this is our customers are coming screaming at us, Docker is the greatest thing in the world, right? It's this year's OpenStack. Last year, OpenStack, greatest thing in the world. This year, it's Docker. <laughs> we'll see you know, what happens. Bundled user space, okay? So this is where the security guys start to say, mm -hmm. Okay, so what Docker is actually doing is it's bundling its user space with the application. Very different than Vert Sandbox, which is sharing slash user. Customers love this idea because guess what? When you guys do updates, you break their applications. Every time 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, some application gets broken. Customers don't want us breaking their applications anymore. So if the application comes with this user space and you update the host, it won't see the update on the host. It'll continue to run. That's the idea. That's why Docker is so attractive. Uh, when Docker came out, um, uh, it also has an incredibly simple CLI. Vert Sandbox, classic Red Hat, Vert Sandbox service can do lots and lots of stuff, but it's got a, you know, a 175 characters long to do a command. In order to do 
Docker, you do Docker run space, Fedora space, bin shell, and you get the container. Okay? Has a registry of applications available so people are uploading applications. I'm not I'm ignoring that. <laughs> uh, and I, I got another talk that's in 10, mi uh, 10 minutes left. Um, so Docker uh, has, you have the ability to build a Docker image, upload it up to uh, the Docker registry, and anybody else in the world can download it. So you can have, you know, you can package up your version of Hadoop, and then all of a sudden it becomes the hot Hadoop that everybody's running in the whole world. Security guys might be a little nervous about that, but that's what's going on, okay? So it's very hot technology. Um, there was a problem with it from a Red Hat point of view, is it was, by, it was using uh, a union file system that uh, has never been upstreamed. And Alex came along and actually did an unbelievable job and switched it over to using LVM thin, pro thin provisioning. Uh, Docker has jumped on that bandwagon because now they can do it on top of Fedora, or RHEL, and Ubuntu. Um, so now you can actually use either um, uh, UnionFS or uh, the thin provisioning stuff. Uh, Alex has also done a ButterFS version of it. So, uh, uh, and there's talks that there's going to be an overlay file system coming along that we might also use for it. So what you really what they're doing is they have sort of a base operating system, then you're layering on top of it additional changes. So just think of, uh, you can go into a container and do a yum update. Now your container is the base container plus the yum update, and then you could potentially could rip it off and, and use it other places. Um, it uses LXC technologies. As I said, um, we were doing some Libvirt LXC uh, integration, but now we're actually concentrating on system DN spawn integration. Very hot technology. It uses all the underlying stuff. When we look at Vert Sandbox versus Docker, uh, the main difference is updates don't break applications. In Vert Sandbox, it will continue to break applications. Um, security updates don't fix applications. Again, security guys. Ooh. Security updates would, would fix, a, uh, say, you have a bad Apache. So the, the, the goal with what we're working on is to actually figure out a way that we can tell you you have a bad, bad Docker application running on your system, and you really need to go to your application provider and say, hey, get me a new Docker image that has this fix for the crypto libraries that are used inside of this application. Uh, simple CLI, complex CLI. Uh, simple CLI can actually be bad on the Docker end because you can't do as much configuration as you can do inside of Vert Sandbox. Um, CLI and, and uh, Vert Sandbox more comprehensive, much easier to set up uh, real complex networks. Um, right now, Vert Sandbox has System D integration, but since that's my primary goal is to get System, in, system D integration into Docker, that hopefully will will end and we'll have almost common between the two. Docker is unbelievably uh, hot technology, has an upstream repository, makes it really easy. Anybody can just install Docker and then you say Docker run, Fedora, anything, it'll go to the registry and bring down the Fedora image to your box, put together by Matt. Is he here? There he is. Okay. So basically uh, there's lots and lots of Fedora images starting to, to show up at the uh, registry. Uh, in RHEL terms, eventually there will be a RHEL registry, so you'll be able to go out and potentially get Docker run, JBoss, Magic Beans, or whatever they call them, and it'll go out and just <laughs> suck it down to your box, and you will be running Docker Ma JBoss Magic Beans. Okay, so that, that's really what the goal is. Obviously, we're not going to be loading registry with, with RHEL images up on uh, Docker. We have a, an agreement with Docker that they will, if someone comes and asks for rel images, they will reroute them to us, and I'm not sure we're going to ever go to them for that. We'll go probably go to, say, your satellite server and look for our images first, then go over to the Docker image. Um, so the big problem with bundling is uh, security guys that don't like it so much. A uh, little bit about containers. We've actually uh, gotten up, this is with Vert Sandbox, scales to 1,000 containers running Apache services. 8,000 containers running bin shell. So this thing really scales uh, really well. Uh, it's a huge, OpenShift is dying to get this stuff. Um, uh, obviously, real workloads will, will vary. Uh, we're, these are the things we're working on enhancing for Docker right now. Uh, the Docker model right now is to an application connects to a server. The server then launches the container underneath the server, reroutes standard out, standard error back to the Docker application. There's several problems with that, 
But the main one, in my opinion, is that we lose that C groups all the way through to the bottom thing. So what we're working on is basically to get fork exec models. So the Docker application will go to talk to the server, then the server will come back, uh, yeah, and, and we'll launch the, launch the container underneath as a child process of, of the Docker, and we can pl apply the C groups like an administrator would expect. Uh, there is support for ButterFS built into it. We're moving to systemd and spawn. Uh, we want, the big thing that we really want is to get socket activation to work. So it's a huge thing for OpenShift because they want to kill their containers, right? They don't want a thousand containers running simultaneously. They want them to come up, do their thing, and then die. So systemd has socket activation. We need to plumb socket activation all the way through to the container. Uh, we're adding uh, support for SC Linux, the same support that's in Vert Sandbox, as we mentioned earlier, and it's going to go through. And I can't do a demo because I got the out of time sign. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. I would love to get SMD running in Docker. Right now, what I'm, I'm really interested in getting socket active. The first step is to get socket activation running. I would like to get Vert Sandbox model to actually work inside of Docker. Then we could stop using Vert Sandbox. So I would like to get to the point where I run a systemd inside of a Docker image and would launch a unit file inside of the Docker image and, and go to that. That would be an optional model that you could do, use. But right now with Docker, you would run your Apache, you would be PID1. So if you ran a standard Docker image that, and just ran Apache, it's PID1, and it sees no other processes in the system. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, it does not make virtualization redundant because you'd probably want to run containers inside of your virtual machines. So you, you really want multiple levels, and you know you can't run Windows inside of a container. Okay, so but yeah, you, it most likely. I mean, no, it's not going to make virtualization. I mean, EC2 is not going away. Um, so yeah, you still want virtual machines, uh, but for a lot of work workloads, you would just use containers instead of uh, virtual machines. Anybody else? Yep. Can you? Can you or should you? Uh, the Docker model says yes. It gives me a headache thinking about it, though, because uh, uh, right now Docker has two modes for running a container. You can run what's called a privileged container and a non-privileged container. A privileged container can have Docker containers running it. Matter of fact, Docker, requir Docker says that they require Docker to be built inside of a container. Docker has to be built inside of a container, so Docker and Docker. So yeah, they want to be able to go all the way, all the way down. It just the, the reason I, you know, we're, we're having all these talks about, you know, you know, what happens in that type of environment. I'm minus five minutes now. All right, last question. All right, we're done. All right, thank you. <laughs>